Hello there, this is Russ Buecher in Control My Nikon. In this video, we're going to see how you can trigger the shutter using motion detection in live view. An example of this is setting up your camera at a bird bath or a bird feeder and you can have the shutter triggered whenever motion is detected near those objects. So we'll just draw a little target in live view and when the bird enters it, we'll get its picture. So let's give it a try. I'm currently connected to a D800. Let's go into live view. And I have a test object here. This is just a radiometer that gives us a bit of motion. Now to define the motion trigger, you need to go to the trigger menu and down to motion. And here it is. Okay, so we have a bunch of different options here. The top part is for defining the target. And the bottom part is what we'll do when motion is detected. So I have it set here to shoot with a reset of every 10 seconds. Now up at the top here we have turbo and you can turn turbo on for slower computers. It doesn't do a thorough analysis of motion detection but on slower computers that can be a good thing because it can uh, take a good amount of CPU to detect motion. I'll just leave it on turbo here. Okay, the next thing to do is enable it. And now you can see here it's trying to detect motion and sometimes depending on where you've set the sensitivity slider it will find motion in areas that you may not think have motion. For example, if I have sensitivity low, these little dots here on the periphery, well, there's no motion there. However, there's noise, and it's picking up on that, that the camera noise is varying from frame to frame. So all you need to do is increase the sensitivity to a point where it's really just focusing on the area that has the motion. Now, the way motion is detected is by the use of contrast detection. And it's illustrated pretty clearly here. You'll see here with a white background, these white paddles coming towards you are not registering any motion. That's because there's not much contrast between these white panels and its edges and the background. But look over on the left hand side where you have the receding black paddles. These have a lot of contrast between the white background and the black surface. So it's picking that up as motion. So you'll want good lighting and good contrast to be able to detect motion. If this were a bird feeder and in the background there was a lot of trees moving around in the wind, you would have a very difficult time capturing that bird because it'll want to always trigger on the background motion. So you need to have a scene with a very clear, unmoving background. So the next thing we're going to do is draw a target. I'm just going to bring the sensitivity back up. And we click on Draw Targets. So now we're on Target Drawing Mode. And you'll notice the cursor here has this little green box attached to it. All you need to do is left click, left click, left click. And now this green area is the target zone. And you can keep on clicking to make a target. Now you can also use the clear button as well to clear it. Motion detection takes one or two hundred milliseconds. And so by the time motion is detected, your object may have passed already through the scene. So you may want to lead it a little bit by placing the target area a little bit before where you expect your target to land. Okay, so I'm going to draw a target here again. And then when you're done drawing a target, let's take the checkbox off. Set my sensitivity so we have some action. The next thing you need to do is specify how many dots in this target will trigger the action. So there's a slider here. Right now it's set to there needs to be 97 dots in this target before the action will be triggered. 
and we can bring it lower we can say only 38 but typically you want this number to be as large as practical so if you are trying to take a picture of that bird landing at the bird feeder you don't want a bee or a wasp flying by triggering it a bee or wasp might only generate one or two dots of motion but because a bird is a lot larger it will have more dots of motion now you just enable the action and whenever enough motion is detected it will trigger it I'll simulate that just by decreasing the slider here and the captures now this reset is very important because you need to allow enough time for your image to be transferred and you may not want images to be continuously being captured from minor amounts of motion okay I'm just going to move this back up and disable it you can also couple this with the continuous burst shooting of the body so to do that you just go to the workflows burst make sure that you have specified that the body is in continuous mode you'll need to set a dial on the body to enable that then you set how many shots you want and very importantly you must turn off the autofocus of the camera there's a switch on the body flip it to manual focus the reason for that and this is a special feature or bug in Nikon firmware is when you do a continuous burst the first shot will be captured at whatever your current focus is the second shots can use phase autofocus and it'll mess up the focus so you need to disable the focus if you're using burst capture so at this point you could just set it up at your bird feeder put it on burst if you like draw your target wait for the birds go for dinner come back later and find your images are already there now you can also change the colors of these dots and the opacity so you can make them a bit more see-through if they're being too obtrusive and maybe you might have a red bird feeder and these red dots don't look right so you can just click here and change the color of your dots whatever works out best for the scene and that's it that's how you trigger the shutter using motion detection in the control my icon happy tethering